Welcome to part two of Stripe Payments with Angular 4 and Firebase. In part one, we collected the payment token from Stripe, and in this episode, we're going to build a Firebase cloud function that will actually charge the card. All Stripe transactions need to occur on a real backend server, and that's exactly what we're going to use cloud functions for. The first step is to initialize cloud functions if they're not already set up in your project. Run Firebase init, and then cd into that functions directory. Then run npm install stripe with the save flag to save it to the local project. Your package.json file should look something like this. And from here, we need to set an environment variable with our stripe API key. Run firebase functions config set stripe.test key followed by your own stripe API key. Check out the link in the description to just copy and paste this command. Now we can start building the function in the index.js file. First step is to import the Firebase functions library as well as the admin database. And for Stripe, we'll initialize it with our API key using that environment variable we just set. The name of the function will be Stripe charge, and we'll use the onWrite database callback to trigger this function. In other words, whenever a new payment is written to the database, this function will be invoked. It has an event object that has the data from that node in the database, which is the payment along with the token. So we can get that by calling event.data.val. And we'll also set variables for the user ID as well as the payment ID just to make our code a little more concise. And then we want the function to return null if there is no payment or if the payment already has a charge. From there, we'll chain together a bunch of promises, the first one being the user in the database this isn't completely necessary, but it's a good idea if you have recurring charges or if you want to save customer data in the database. We call once just to get a single snapshot of this data. Then we just return the snapshot value. From there, we can tell Stripe to charge this customer's credit card with the payment token. We can set a few variables just to keep the code organized. And we'll also set an item potency key using the Firebase push ID for this payment. This is important because it prevents duplicate charges. It guarantees that multiple post requests to this ID can only have a single side effect. So if we ever had a network issue, it wouldn't duplicate the charge on the customer's card. From there, we set the source to the token ID and the currency to US dollars. Then we can just easily build the charge object from these variables. Now the Stripe API finally comes into play. We call Stripe charges create and pass it that charge, then pass the item potency key as the second argument in its own object. Then we wait for Stripe to return the actual charge object, which will tell us whether or not the charge succeeded. In this case, we'll go ahead and save the entire object to the database, and when we look at it, you'll see there's all kinds of useful information in there. Now let's go ahead and deploy the function so we can start testing it. Run Firebase deploy flagging only functions. Then go back into your app and test it out with another test charge. We should see it turn green, then orange very quickly. That's the new token being created, then the charge being updated from the cloud function. You can see the object from Stripe contains all kinds of information, such as paid, refunded, risk level, and things like that. I went through that very quickly, so let's go back and revisit the entire Stripe payment process from start to finish. The user will enter their credit card details through the Angular app with Stripe checkout. Then Stripe will respond with the payment token, which we then want to save in the Firebase database. This will automatically trigger a cloud function, which sends the token back to Stripe. Stripe will charge the card and then respond with the charge details. So at this point, we're at the end of the process. We've received the funding, and now we just need to update the user's balance or assign the charge to a specific product. And that'll be the topic of the third installment in the series. We're going to create a payment history component and then give the user the ability to buy digital products with their account balance. That's it for part two. If you want to learn more about Stripe payments, consider joining our Slack team or becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com, where you'll get exclusive content about building apps with Angular, Firebase, and Stripe payments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for part three.